so uh, the breaking news. Oh. <clears throat> so uh, I saw a tweet last night. You know, the Fau- Fauci had a doc. Uh, the doc, had, I don't know, ninety one percent, ninety two. Oh, wow. Pretty pretty high on rotten tomatoes. Us this, yeah. yeah, a lot of people. It, me and Brian were tagged. I don't know. Gina mm-hmm. probably was, but it was zero with uh, the folks, the well, audience. The controversy was there was no audience score. Like right. They, were, they somehow Sorry. Uh, were disabled. Or the, the claim was, oh, why have they disabled the audience? Score? I rarely say this or think this, but thank God Brian is here. <laughs> because Once in a while, man. You're right. It wasn't zero. It was no it's, audience score. Right. So how does this very much talked about in Ballyhoo doc, it's got 33 reviews from critics, which is, you know, pretty substantial for a newish doc, uh, have zero reviews yeah. by the people. And so people started thinking, crying foul. Like, what, why are you shutting down the people? Right. Presumably, I don't know what the ratio is, but by the time you get to 33 reviews mm-hmm. of the critics, you're going to have hundreds from the people who are chiming in, sometimes for thousands. For critic, yeah. Yeah, there's quite a few more people than there are critics or, or certified right. critics. So, so, so people start thinking, what are they doing? Right. And uh, it turns out, I don't think they wanted the negativity, but then they must have got, somebody must have got to them because they reversed course and they opened it up. So I guess that doing any research is that the small movies like this, they'll screen them for the critics, right? They'll send them screening links or they'll have screeners like in Santa Monica at some tiny theater. You've been to these things. Mm-hmm. Or, but because it's not available to the public yet, they won't officially allow public review or, you know, user reviews because no one has seen it. No one has access to this. It's not like it's on Netflix yeah, and no they're one just not the letting public, I mean, the audience I don't weigh doubt in. They, I don't doubt they have uh, some sort of, they benefit in some way from... Well, from, that's what I was asking Chris. I was saying, when did this thing show up that people could see it. It was this morning, or had it been? It was today. Well, there you go. Oh, well, I mean, uh, that's when they could rate it. Excuse me, it's streaming October six, so it's pretty. Oh, it's been oh, out for a week. Thank you, Chris. All right, oh, <laughs> that didn't days. help. Oh, sorry. Streaming October six, people could see okay. it. Okay, well, there you go. And yet, I guess nobody chose to. Uh, well, More this likely. is back mm-hmm. to my nefarious mm-hmm. uh, thought, which is they had a week. Right. People saw it. But they wouldn't let those reviews in, and then they got a bunch of backlash, and then this morning Suddenly. they they reversed it, and now people mm-hmm. could. But I'm guessing that's because of the pressure they got for not letting sure. people do it. Now I don't know where where it's at now, Max Zapata. You it's can, at three percent. You audience. can tell us how many of the audience three. people chimed in since they opened it uh, this mm-hmm. morning, as you not as you <laughs> hear three. All right, 200, is that 250 plus, plus. ratings? Anyway, so uh, I then I started uh, Then I started thinking about, uh, then I got another article about uh, Dave Chappelle is using, from NPR, Dave Chappelle's relying on his white privilege mm. Mm. to say the things wow. he wants to say. Now, remember, Larry Elder 10 minutes ago was called the new blackface of white supremacy. Of white supremacy. Mm. We're now crossing into this weird nether region where black people can actually have white privilege as well. I mean, it can, you could just call it privilege. Yeah, I, I was gonna maybe say, we should just call it privilege. The privilege. Yeah, yeah. Call it white privilege. Well, look, at a certain point when enough black people gain entry into the white privilege lounge, mm-hmm. then it's got to just be privilege right. at this point. Into Augusta, then well, they start right. privilege. And that's interesting because part of Chappelle's whole speech, basically, you know, his stand-up was anti-white people, anti-white people's privilege. Now then... Uh, Christian Toto, who's a reviewer on on Rotten Tomatoes, suggested that we take a look at the score of Chappelle's stand-up special, People versus the Critics. I think we know how this one's going to go. 33 with the critics and 97 with the audience (laughs) score. So now, so basically... I got into an argument with Matt Atchity and who was running or working with Rotten Tomatoes yeah, back then uh, in 2000, March of 2015. I said, you guys are going woke and it's mm. fucking up your scores. Your scores are starting to reflect the, the politics or, or the politics right. of your organization. He denied it vehemently. Well, yes. My pl- question is, is please how, defend it. No, no, no defending yes. my question to clarification, I guess. How is Rotten Tomatoes couple? They're just an aggregator. They're just reporting what reviewers are doing. Well, in this particular. Well, you're right. I, I'm, it's not your fault, but this is what you're presenting. Like you're you're presenting this 
this world is getting askew and it's on your, your, well, I'll put it uh, two things. One is it is their fault for keeping the Fauci reviews away. They have now entered that, okay. that fray. So they're now doing it on, but also you are going to have to figure it out. Like if this is what's going on and, and these things are getting skewed, you're going to have to make an adjustment for your website. And that's going to take, I don't know how you're going to do that, but you're going to have to do it because it's getting skewed. It's going that direction. Totally agree. And, and, and we've seen, maybe Christian actually probably knows more about this than I do when we talk to him, but we've seen a long history recently of um, uh, uh, review bombing, right? Like people will yeah. like go on like some subject they don't like or some movie they don't like, and, those, and their, their, their reviews will be way out of the audience mostly. You don't see with the critics, but you know what I'm saying. If only there was a way, and I was fantasizing about this, and of course there's no way to do it, you have to see the movie to review it as, 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 a, as an audience member. You could do that. Why well, couldn't you upload a, your ticket stub? You're probably, like if you're Rotten Tomatoes, what you're probably going to have to do is go, all right, we'll have a reviewer from the Los Angeles Times, which is pretty hard mm-hmm. left-leaning, and then we'll have a reviewer from the Wall Street Journal. Mm-hmm. And that'll be a sort of right and left kind of balance, I think. They, I guess. I, think I don't think the problems with the critics' reviews, per se, the audience reviews, as you can see, are skewed wildly based on wh- uh, certain movies where they fall on the scale or where they fall on the spectrum, right? Well, well you're the saying problem, the same thing, but the, one from no, the jangle. The problem with the critics i to me the problem that rotten tomatoes is going to have is sort of the same problem that the oscars is going to have they're going to sort of go a direction whether they aggregate sure. this stuff or they get dragged that mm-hmm. direction either way they end up there and then people go eh, i'm not really paying attention uh-huh. anymore so dave Chappelle, i saw the special it's good Maybe uh, a critic could say it's in the 70s or the 80s or, or something like that but it's in the 30s and I think right. that's where the where the problem lies. And then ones will go other directions right. depending on, on the theme of it. It's neither a 33 nor is it a 97. Right. Agreed. So it was interesting that Christian Toto reached out to Max Zapata as we were discussing this stuff because I thought, well, what ends up happening oftentimes is – if I do a movie like uh, No Safe Spaces with Dennis Prager, that'll be destroyed by yeah. the critics. Be obliterated. Understood. That's how that's how they lean. That's how it works. But then when I do a movie like Uppity, which the critics are going to have a hard time obliterating because uh, it may. <laughs> <laughs> now. Here's the, the problem We're We're laughing, the yeah. with, with the critics. <laughs> yeah, it's 97 percent with the audience yeah. now. <laughs> Uppity was on heavy lo- rotation on Netflix. It trended on Netflix. It made a bunch of top 10, it top 20 lists, like features on articles and things like that. There's no reason why it should only have one review. It didn't have enough reviewers to by, review it. By critic. Now, comically, I then last night went, who is this one reviewer who reviewed it? Tom Shales, Tom Shales. Christian Toto. Oh, so the one guy well, a little bit of home cooking, if you ask yeah, me, <laughs> the one guy who did review it uh, was Christian Toto. Otherwise, there would be zero reviews. Wow. So the mode is if we have something we hate, we're going to dive in on that. Like No Safe Spaces, which never made it onto Netflix and wasn't on a bunch of lists that got plenty of negative reviews right. by the critics. Up and he's going to be, have, you're going to have a hard time as a woke critic tearing a, a new asshole to me and Willie T. Ribs and that story. It's so we just don't touch it. it. So we don't touch it. Yeah. So that's kind of the world we're living yes. in. And I agree with Brian. That is more the critics because Ron Tomatoes just goes, what What do we do? Yeah. They're just yeah, reporting their populace. Their populace right. reports happens to lean a certain but way. But we're going to have to try to figure this out because it's screwing up our system that we used to enjoy. Yeah, I think Brian's solution is way easier and more feasible than yours because, you know, like on Amazon, it'll tell you in the reviews if it's a verified purchase, if they can verify that they actually purchase sure. it as opposed to... So that that can be done. It would how be do nice. You, how do you look hard. into the hearts and find the truth of a critic? I mean, well, good Well, the luck. critics, I, I think you're going to have to just... You're going to have to now take publications and you're have, going to have to go, well, the Village Voice is a left-leaning publication or whatever. 
and um, I, I can't think of the, the Daily Wires right. a right leaning publication. So there's one of those and one of the other. Like right. we're gonna have to. We're now at the point where maybe the publications or the critics are going to have to declare a major. They're going to have to go, who'd you vote for in the last election? And then we'll have to get us an even amount somehow. What you're saying makes sense. You're just so sad that my, like, my refuge of movies yeah. is now being invaded by, oh, it must be you know, even right or left, or it's a right movie or it's a left movie. It's like, can we just enjoy it? It's just a movie. Well, it and the shows, now granted, it, it, oh, with the caveat, of course, Fauci, you know, the documentary or certain things are, of course, couched politically. It I'm shows it kind of that. shows that politics is now sort of trickled into every every yeah. facet of every organization and every company and every again, Rotten Tomatoes just aggregates scores of critics and uh this has been going on for a while, and now you have to... But again, you you look at a score on Rotten Tomatoes, and you have to start factoring in the theme. Right. And that's unfortunate, but the Oscars are going that direction as well. Christian Toto on line one. Christian? Hey, how's it going? Good. How are you doing? Where are you, uh, where are you at these days? I'm in Denver, Colorado. Oh, really? How is yep. that? I love it here. Uh, people are nice. The weather is mostly excellent. Uh, lack of humidity, and then it can be a little volatile with the weather. You get a twenty degree day, then a forty degree day, a fifty degree day. It shifts madly, but overall, I like it. It goes from cold to super cold. What is uh, <laughs> what is your synopsis of sort of what's going on with the Fauci thing? Because I know you're on the inside. Oh, has he seen it? Have you seen it? Yeah. You know, I have not seen. It. I've been reporting on it so so much. I, I feel like I've seen it twice. But, you know, whether I liked it or not is really not the point. There are other sort of cultural issues which you're touching on here. And uh, what you're all saying about the film critic community is accurate. But the, the trick, though, is that, you know, if you go to the Village Voice, I think you want a liberal critic. You want to have a, a voice that kind of echoes the theme of that platform. And the same with Daily Wire. But what I see across the landscape in critic land is that it is people working for mainstream outlets who bring their politics, which are almost uniformly left of center, into their review. So that makes it more complex. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about a film critic and you think about the life of a film mm -hmm. critic, these aren't guys who worked on oil derricks. It's a self-select example. Yeah, you have you have you have a sort of you don't there's not a really blue there's not a blue collar. If you no. think about the right leaning, you have more religious, blue collar, that kind of stuff. These are more went to colleges oh, in New York, kind of coastal based, yeah, LA like more New French New York, York films, yes, the movie, in, football in, games. Intellectual. And so it's going to attract that, just sort of like how cops, you know, so there's a thing. So Police officers used to just be the big meatheads we went to high school with, right? Mm -hmm. Now there's a lot more women in there, and those aren't the meatheads we went to high school with, mm -hmm. but they had to make an attempt to like get more women into the ranks to kind of tilt the scale a little, little back the other direction. Does that analogy make sense to you, Christian? Well, I understand that. I think there's actually been an effort in, in critical communities to broaden the perspectives, you know, maybe get more people of color reviewing films. And I think if you look at the landscape of critics, it often is white and male. But there's never a, a an effort to say, well, you know, most critics lean left. How about we talk about the other half of the country? You know, why, why aren't they represented? There's no effort there. There's no consideration to the people that maybe we should have more Christians reviewing films. So that kind of gets lost in the conversation. But, you know, we need, need more voices. At the end of the day, you know, I created my own platform. And that's what I do. And more people can do that as well. But just generally speaking, the vast majority of people who want to review films are left of center. And that's fine, but it, it often shows. And I think you should kind of meet material halfway. So if a movie has a right of center theme, you shouldn't just, you know, give it the old thumbs down in the, in the Ebert tradition just because of that. You know, you got to get more. What, why? Why is it not good? Well, it's kind of, you know, it, it's interesting because uh, when I did No Safe Spaces, I knew it was going to get the thumbs down because Dennis Prager was involved and because I was involved. Now, the theme of the movie is just free speech, essentially, covers right and left. But I just knew by the people involved that it was going to get the thumbs down. And that's the thing. You shouldn't be able to tell 
Mm-hmm. Whether it's going to get a thumbs up or thumbs down by the theme or by the people involved, we should watch the program and then uh, render a, d- a verdict or a decision. Yeah, I'm sorry. Can I just say, as if speaking, if I were a critic, you know how everybody is a critic on Facebook and Twitter, the most deadliest thing you can say about a movie is, well, I don't have to see it. I don't right. have to see it because I know who's in it. Mm-hmm. Well, so Christian, <laughs> what, what do you think happened with the Fauci thing? Was there any foul play here or shuffling of um, the cards, so to speak? Or what, As it how pertains to the user reviews. Yeah, the user reviews. How did that work out? Well, you know, there's two main websites that cover entertainment, specifically movies, imdb.com and Rotten Tomatoes. And I've been checking IMDb, and the user reviews have been pretty terrible for Fauci, and they're letting people kind of weigh in. It didn't seem like they were doing the same for the Fauci film at Rotten Tomatoes. Now, that could be that so few people saw it that there weren't that many people to you know, weigh in pro or con. And now that the film is on Disney+, Plus, many more people can see it. So I don't, I don't want to kind of blow the whistle on that. But I will do is I, a few weeks ago, I, I was kind of curious what the box office for this movie would be because, you know, love him, hate him. Fauci's a, a big name. Mm-hmm. And you think people would be curious about it. Did it play in theaters? And I looked all over the, yeah, it was in theaters. It's September 10th it started. Fauci has so been around, the biggest and, name and no one the last had the two numbers. years. Oh, there were no numbers. <laughs> No numbers, no bod. No, this is from Nat, Nat Geo, National Geographic, and Magnolia. Now, Magnolia is a pretty reputable indie film company. So these, these are not, you know, pikers here. These are big players. Why? Why were there numbers? So I, I waited a week, I waited another week, and there were no figures involved. So I reached out to the company, their PR people, saying, hey, you, you guys and gals have any box office numbers? I'm not seeing anything. You reached Nothing. out. Let me just be uh, clear here. Uh, Magnolia, I think, is Mark Cuban's company. Yeah. Um, I know because one day, a million years ago, I think he offered me a dollar oh. for the hammer. <laughs> nice. <laughs> These I reasons I'm out. <laughs> I negotiated. Was, are we talking change? Oh. Are we talking about a single bill here? <laughs> are we talking about four quarters? It's important for tax purposes. Um, a shaving of an ingot? Yes. Yeah, so, um, but I've released a few small movies in a few theaters. And I can tell you that if you release them in three movie theaters, you'll still can go to some website and find out that it made $51,000. Box Office Mojo tracks that stuff pretty well. Yeah, regardless of the size of of the the review. So that seems a little curious, right, Christian? Yeah. And I actually looked at some other recent films from those two studios and I think from in most cases, there were numbers found at boxofficemojo.com for each of them. And again, as, as Brian said, small films, big films, no matter the film, they release the numbers to these different sites and they report on them. And if a movie makes only 10,000, but it was only in maybe 12 theaters, that's not the end of the world because that's what you make in a small amount of theaters. Well, they could be releasing it. I wouldn't even know how many theaters it was in, I assume, because I'm looking right now and I can't even tell, but they could have released it in New York and L.A. just for uh, awards consideration. Right. just which, the Lemley. Course, yeah, they do. They do that sometimes, and often those numbers are big because if it's that sure. small a release, especially in an urban center, then people flock to it. So I didn't even see the amount of screens it was, it was play, playing on. I, I, that, the, even that I couldn't find out. The, the conspiracy theorists would say regardless of how long it was released mm-hmm. and in what theaters, how few, there would still be a corresponding number. Right, should be findable. It's, historically, it's not, yeah. I, it and may be unprecedented. Because you, I, I've always, I mean, I don't know, but I've checked my movies and I've checked other movies and they pretty much, uh, it made $10 yeah. in two theaters. I mean, like I've seen some <laughs> right. really depressing numbers. Uh, my movies and and others, and there is no no info right. on it. But I don't know, Christian. Is your is your take that they were sort of suppressing that information? It is suspicious enough to consider that. I don't want to have any definitive statements because we don't know for sure. But again, a, a movie of this profile from a studio that has a lot of has a reputation, it doesn't make sense. Now, if it over. It kind of made more money than they expected. You would think they would be shouting that from the rooftops. You know, hey, Fauci made X. And those documentaries don't make a lot of money. The, the, the Michael Moore movies and the Dinesh D'Souza's, they're the, uh, the exceptions to the rules. So no one expected this to make $50 million. Right. But how much? 
Is it possible, Christian, you think that maybe Disney had a hand in not reporting any numbers because it obviously benefits them to have the appearance of a premiere? Like, I assumed it was a premiere on their site. I had no idea that it was even in a theater or two. Do you think Disney could have had a, uh, a hand in that? It would obviously benefit them. I don't know. I mean, if the film did well in limited release, that would be that would be your calling card. Hey, come watch it on Disney. This movie, you know, the, the theater hit. Now comes to Disney. You could watch it at home. Well, I, I don't think there's a downside to that. Here's, but then, so if you're, uh, I'll put my Mark Garagos hat on here, and we'll try to follow the trail. Who is responsible for the information not being released? Because if you oh, are the, the studio, right? Well, the studio. It, yeah. It's it's all the studio. They it's, don't get information from the theaters. That would be is impossible. There, well, maybe or maybe not. I don't. I don't know. In today's computer age, is there? <laughs> be, be is it, it? So we always just rely on the studio. There is no website that goes here. Are the three theaters. Here's what they made at those three theaters. It's all from. Say, I mean, what I'm saying is, is the studio has to get their information from the theater, mm -hmm. and so the theater has the information. Is it? Is there any website that just goes off the theaters? Or it's all just, I don't know. We'll get the I, I did check multiple websites that are known for tracking these box office numbers, and none of them had that. Mm -hmm. And when I spoke to, I think I spoke to an analyst about this situation, he said that the studios will get the numbers, will kind of share the numbers around. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. never heard of a theater reporting. So, yeah, because I could remember looking back on some old numbers, and it'll say, like, each theater how sure. much it made. Per so screen. the theater has to report it. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there are some pretty embarrassingly low numbers. And I think what we're talking about here is the theater, or sorry, the studios had some sort of fiduciary duty. It's like, it's like if the jobs report came out and the job numbers were really low mm -hmm. and really bad— the government couldn't go, well, we don't like the way this reads, yeah. so we're just not going to mm -hmm. share it with the public at yeah. large. Well, yeah. They still go, well, these are shit numbers, and they're embarrassing, but we got to get out yeah. there. Let's we spin got, it. we got to sure. tell them. We'll tell them the number, and then we'll we'll talk sure. about COVID right. or something else. At least else. on Friday afternoon. Would you right. like to know what the IMDb number is? Yes. As and, and just to preface this, Christian, we talk a lot about on IMDb, everything's basically within a, what, 6.8 to 7.6. <laughs> yeah, maybe four. The Godfather's are like 7.4. Fauci right. is a 1.5. And that's... Out of 10. And and <laughs> but the and it's 6.3 thousand reviews. Wow, that is, that is crazy. That's uh, all user generated. Can uh, I ask yeah. Christian a question? Christian, yeah. I don't know if you're on... I don't think you heard when I, I floated this uh, pie-in-the-sky uh, theory or... or, or um, uh, hypothesis, but I, I don't even know if it would work. But what, you're obviously aware of review bombing. It seems like it's happening maybe here on IMDb. But in order to get uh, people, in order to verify that people have seen the movie and not just review bombing, which is kind of a problem, why not require they, you know, some proof they've seen the movie? This would be very hard to do, but it would solve a lot of problems. Yeah, listen, I know it's a real problem that people are maybe weighing in on these movies without having seen them. It's a subject they don't like, so they, they say it's terrible. But how do you do that? Especially, when, do you do you send in your Disney Plus receipt that you paid the monthly bill? You know, do you send your ticket stuff? It seems like a lot it of is work. Hard. It would be hard. Yeah. I don't know the work around around that. I think it's I think it's a great question. I think it's a it's a tricky thing, and it's you know it's not fair to the studios and the filmmakers because they could have a very good film and they just happen to make a it was about a subject that you didn't like. You know, the generic you, and so all of a sudden your 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 beloved movie that you worked you know two years on gets trashed by some person who hasn't even seen it. So. I don't know how they get around that. It's hard. Yeah, I, to me, in a weird way, once we once we sign off on the notion, and I think sadly America has on review bombing, mm -hmm. you can kind of everyone goes, well, it's a one because so many people mm -hmm. hate Fauci, and who knows if it's a one or, or not. But for me, to me, the bigger problem is the critics bombing. Right. Like, we got to figure out a way. I shouldn't be able to tell in advance what the critics are going to like and what they're mm -hmm. not going to like based on the, the theme or yeah. the subject matter. Yes. Go ahead, Gina Grant. I, no, because we're, we're kind of getting out in the weeds. I just think, you know, to what Brian said, with as many websites as if I want to buy something or I want to do something, I have to upload, you know, everything 
minus my birth certificate. I don't think it'd be that hard to just, like you said, put in your, you know, get a fucking confirmation number from Disney Plus or whatever. I don't, I don't think that would well, be that hard. The critics is another story. Slippery Slope guy says, then what? Proof of insurance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, sure. uh, vax, vax, vax card. You can, see where this, you can see where this would go. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. And, and, yeah. Adam, just a quick note. Uh, this is not a new problem. In 2016, the Ghostbusters reboot came out. Oh. And most people didn't care for it. And Richard Roper, who's not a liberal guy, not a conservative guy, I think he's more left of center, he said that his fellow critics graded it on a curve because in the 70 percentile in the positive range. So, this is not new. I think critics wanted to like that movie. They wanted to boost it because it was all female cast and it, it was empowering. That was sort of the narrative at the time. So this is not like a 2021 problem. No, I know. It's something I've been sort of looking at and talking about for, for years now. And um, I don't know. I don't know how we're going to get around it. I just think what it's going to do is we're going to end up having to investigate everything. So if you, again, you look no further than the Oscars, they go film of the year, best film of the year. And you go, all right, now they said it was the best film of the year. Now let me do my homework. What was the theme? (laughs) Who said it was the best? Did they do it because it was super woke? Like who starred in it? And now we, it forces us all to kind of have this one eyebrow raised all the time and go, I will look, I will check into this myself, which unfortunately, the reason we have Rotten Tomatoes and or the Oscars in the past is so we didn't have to check into it our right. own self. Like it's 89 percent of Rotten Tomatoes. I'm going to see this bad boy or it's 21 percent. Right. I'm not going to see this movie. Uh, Christian, let me give you a plug. Website, HollywoodInToto.com uh, is where you can go. You got a book coming out uh, called Virtue Bombs, and you can, uh, when the book comes out, come on and give it a plug. That was good. Thanks so much. Thanks for uh, shedding some light, Christian Toto. All right. Uh, I was talking... Um, I spoke what else a, is new? A, couple about a, week, a couple of weeks ago, I was talking about this trend of defenses uh, celebrating a little too much. Mm. Uh, the whole team must celebrate a, gr- a great play. Like in the, in the, like how the soccer team will basically do a kick line. Well, They're doing that now in football. Yeah, when I was coming up, was not gay. if right. you blocked a punt, that was cause for celebration. But if you just stuffed a run that went a yard, there's not a lot of celebrating going on. Or if you deflected a pass on second down, there wasn't there wasn't a whole lot of celebrating going on. And now there's a whole lot of celebrating going on. And I was talking a couple of weeks ago about this trend of the defense when they pick up a fumble and or pick off a pass, running all the way down to their end zone or actually I don't know if it's the opposite end zone or the furthest end zone away or the other team's end zone, but they make that run all the way down. The entire defense does a gasser, as Brian would call runs with them down there, and then they all pose. Now, this is the fourth quarter of the Chiefs-Bills game, and the Chiefs are down 20 to 31, and they'll talk all the time about, uh, you know, it's the fourth quarter and some of these defensive linemen are getting gassed and they're having to rotate them now mm. because they can't get the pressure on the quarterback and and blah, blah, blah. Well, uh, the Bills, who are back up against their own end zone, uh, throw, uh, I, I guess they're against the Chiefs end zone? What yeah, is it, the Bills Brian? are on their own eight. Yeah, the, the Bills are on the other at their the their goal line. Yeah, and the quarterback's in shotgun. He's standing on the two yard line, and he gets it, and he airs the ball out. So we'll show you the play. But it was really about the celebration. He drops all the way back into the end zone, scrambles, and then launches one from the one yard line. Goes all the way down the field, picked off on the forty by the Chiefs, and now he's waving, <laughs> waving everybody. everybody Come on, and everyone is running down, and we're going to go to the end zone. And we're going to pose for a picture. Uh, <laughs> as he's making the call, as the refs making the roughing the passer now, call. Now, they don't see the flag <laughs> no. of the roughing the passer. It's 98 yards it's away. 98 <laughs> yards away, and their back was doing it. And they just sprinted in the fourth quarter all the way down. That's not a great look. It was a pretty crappy call, by the way. Yeah. I don't even know I what it was. The, they, I guess the driving into the ground. They called the driving into the ground, which is kind of a thing when you kind of go ragdoll 
on top of some. But the whole point is, is uh, we tackled the guy. <laughs> first things, uh, look for laundry. Huh? Uh, you gotta. I feel like there's a flag on every other play these days. Don't run it all the way down. There's always some defensive holding or something down there, roughing the pass or whatever. It is, but Give they it ran second. it all the way down to the end zone, posed for a picture, and then turned around and walked 98, 98 yards, yards back. back. The holler, the walk of shame back. Yeah, right. So. Question. I thought there was like a whole big anti showboating movement. It seems to have gone the other way. It's anti taunting. No taunting. Okay. If he had done it in the guy's face, they probably would have got a penalty. But because the, the, the celebrating. All right, because a guy in a hoodie was really egging him on. Whoever that guy was running with him, I imagine one of the coaches. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, you just have to now say, I guess if you're a coach, you have to go, look. There's a lot of laundry flying out there. They're calling a lot of ticky tack, a lot of ticky tack fouls, and and before you go sprinting. By the way, uh, new policy: no no fourth quarter. If we're down by eleven, uh-huh. no sprinting. Save your energy. No, no unnecessary sprinting yeah. other directions. We we need sure. gas, and it's fair. the end of the game. Uh, number one, and if we're down that far, I don't like all the big. I mean, it's great. You guys, it's the fourth quarter. You got the ball on the 40. You got 60 yards to go. You're down by 11. You're you're far cry away from winning this ball game. You well, didn't, to go right. You didn't just do a pick six with no time left on the clock. <laughs> the other team's still winning by two touchdowns or, t- you know, two scores. So uh, save the celebration, but also... It's got to be like a two Mississippi. We got to look for laundry before we turn our back and yeah. start sprinting down the field or... Or Maybe just, just act like you've been here before. That's the thing. It seems like a sportsmanship I- issue. You know, it just seems tacky, like a rookie thing it's to do. Gauche. Yeah. It's gauche. All right. Let That's me tell you what's it. not gauche. Tommy John, fall is chaos in your pants. Overheating one second, freezing the next. Be ready for anything with underwear that handles everything. I'm wearing my Tommy John's right now. I would never leave the house without my Tommy John's. Breathable, lightweight, moisture wicking fabric. With four times the stretch of competing brands, Tommy John doesn't have customers. They have fanatics. Over 16 million pairs sold. This fall, you got to upgrade what's underneath with the new Tommy John underwear and their luxuriously soft loungewear. Oh, if you guys have not partaken, you must. I mean, the loungewear, just so soft. Good enough to wear anywhere, but feels good enough to go to bed in. Uh, best pair you'll ever wear, or it's free, guarantee, right, Dawson? Get twenty percent off your first order right now at TommyJohn.com slash Adam. That's TommyJohn.com slash Adam for twenty percent off. TommyJohn.com slash Adam. See site for details. Hey, Max Batted, did did we get into that NPR Dave Chappelle article, or did we just mention it? You you, you mentioned it. Do we have? Uh, yeah, we have a couple me, lines of that. Yeah, let me get and did we figure it out? Because I was uh, as I was looking at this article, I was like. I wonder who has more white privilege, me or Dave Chappelle? Ooh. Oh, it's race to finish there has line. to be a way to add that up. Oh, yeah. They got um, laminates for that. I keep, got one in my wallet. Sure. Um, yeah, so this is the rev- uh, a review. For Dave Chappelle, punchlines are dares. His new special, The Closer Goes Too Far by Eric Deggins. Goes too far. Um, and, uh, and Eric is black. I don't know if, if that helps this argument or not, but he says, too often in The Closer... It just sounds like Chappelle is using white privilege to excuse his own homophobia and transphobia. Using white? Oh, so he was using it. Diabolical. So he could be homophobic. (laughs) Wow. Wow. That's 40 chess, man. (laughs) By the way, what if we just replaced it with Japanese... Privilege. Uh, privilege. And he just went, I, he's just using, he's not Japanese. He's using his Japanese privilege so he can attack gays. Uh-huh. <laughs> How long before the Japanese community would go, wait, what the wait, fuck, what, man? What, what, out of this. what privilege do we have so we can attack gay people? <laughs> <laughs> I do like the idea that, that we can use this. This is even, this is more layered than I even thought. It's not that he has white privilege. He's it's using that it. he's using yeah. it to attack gay people. Right. How's it? Does it go over? Can I, one just use white privilege willy nilly? I don't know. I don't know if it's like a tool rental from Home <laughs> Depot. I don't know if you have to get bonded or certified. I don't know if there's a like, cleaning deposit or something you got to put in there. I mean, I, I'm just asking. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I don't asking, I'm, I'm asking, asking questions. But then also, 
it's kind of insulting to white people to go, I'm going to use my white privilege. I'm not white, Ooh. but I'll use the privilege so I can beat on some gay. I need to bash some gay people. Can I borrow your white privilege <laughs> so I can bash it. on gay people? It's cultural appropriation. Well, hold on. If you if you kind of look statistically, no one really wants to get into it. But blacks have a bigger beef with gay people than whitey does statistically, culturally. Mm. I'll just put it to you mm -hmm. that way. So why would a black person need to borrow white privilege? And then who gets to bash gays who's white who goes unscathed? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you go, I get to make fun and bash gay people because I'm white, so you can't touch me. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it's good. There's where we're living. Uh, Max Pat is going to do trending topics, and we'll do that right after this. All right. Hold on. Gina, where you're sitting, that's where Drew sits. Are there the scribble scribes scratched into the surface of, of this? Because uh, Dr. Drew could not prevent himself from doing it. And then I cleaned it up and then he was scribbling away on a piece of paper the last time I saw him, but he hasn't. Well, he's got a little, uh, you know, I think that I'm look, a couple look of these letters right. are natural in the wood. I'm looking to the right there. here. Yeah. That's, that's uh, I'm the sure zone. That came with the maple. That's the, the zone. <laughs> So what Drew does is he gets a piece of paper and then he scribbles sure, hard sure. into yeah. it and then it ends up marring the top of our beautiful yeah. uh, console here. We need to give and a then I go <laughs> and get the scotch pad and the buffing compound and then I fix it and then tell him not to do it anymore. How's that and working then, out? Uh, we made it almost 13 days. And then he came back and started doing it again. And I'm, I'm interested in that wow. process. It's like a tick. So there's a lot of scribbles right here where my spot is. However, other people use this, and I'll also point out that I have never been witnessed not using a Sharpie at this desk. If you can find mm -hmm. evidence That's of true. that, by all means. But I'm scared. I, I don't want to use a Sharpie. You'll not find it. It'll bleed. I, I'm basically saying if Dr. Drew can't pull off simple requests, then where are we? None of us <laughs> anymore. You know what I mean? Doesn't he stack the paper? I have like three papers in Now right he does this single sheet oh, and he draws feverishly. Yeah. He scribbles feverishly. He's not writing words. He just, yeah, just patterns. He needs a comp He's book and a crayon. Them. Swastikas mostly. Sure. But well, all right. I see it. It's right here. All right. So uh, go ahead. Yeah, you handed me a better. coaster during the song. I just, I had a coffee. Does coffee, will that, would that mess up the table too? Uh, Why, what chance it? Yeah, okay. coffee. I don't know. My feeling is we got a bunch of coasters. Mm -hmm. We should use them. Yeah. That's me. Okay. I dig it. Coffee may, may not. All right. Well, Adam. But now uh, we don't have to guess. Or did it throw off the height of the mug for you? <laughs> it, it, it did, It's yeah. three thirty seconds I, taller than it was before. Can I know, you get up there? I'm not calibrated <laughs> anymore. I can't, I can't get it. Uh, so it's, it's your favorite time of the year, Adam. Baseball playoffs. The only time you should care about baseball. That's right. Right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brian's Giants are doing pretty well. Best mm -hmm. record in the league. <laughs> yeah. Although by the time here people hear this, they might be down in the playoffs. They might be. So uh, game two, uh, Dodgers versus Giants at... Uh, at um, excuse me, Oracle Park, there was a there was a guy in the audience. I don't know if you saw Brian. Or in the head? Uh, no, no, oh. not that guy. Uh, uh, Tom Cruise. He was oh, yeah. trending over the weekend because he was at the game. Cruise is there. Oh, no, the Giants there? fan. Yeah. No, he's not. Uh, he he went with his son uh, for game two. So he's in the stands. He's in the stands, but everybody's freaking out because it's Tom Cruise. But also, by the way, he looked. So mm -hmm. you looked a, a little of him. puffy. Oh. Looked a little puffy. Mm -hmm. Everyone was. Everyone actually. Most of the comments compared him to Norm MacDonald. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. And the way that Norm looks. Right, the mm -hmm. steroid puffiness. Mm -hmm. But can I just be fair? Can I be intellectually honest? Because, you know, I fucking hate when it's all about women and their looks. Yeah. Like, oh, no, does this, you know, almost 60-year-old man not look 25? <laughs> you yeah. know, give him a break. Boo -hoo. I, I agree. But but it is, but there is something that's it's and yeah, different. I don't know. Is he 60 now? I, I don't 59, know. 59, 61? Like, you know. Yeah, I would say late 50s as a guess. I think yeah. he's fifty nine. Um, well, anyway, so most of the he's and then if they were turning sixty, I yeah, fifty nine. The, yeah. the, the whole thing and when's his birthday? Here's the point. <laughs> July third yesterday. Here's the here's the point. He's born on the third of July. You're mm, supposed are you to. Me? <laughs> you're supposed to get older and you're supposed to look older. That's just that's just the way the way it went. Yeah. I mean. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, Gina. <laughs> We're making it harder than the rest of the women in the world. Thank you very much. But no, you you became it was it was interesting because I was uh 
watching Love Boat last night. Shocking. Ethel Merman. Was, uh, a guest. <gasps> I'm in. That is yeah. the oldest sounding name. Ethel ever. Merman <laughs> is starting the oldest. Starting here, <laughs> starting now. Yeah, Mummy Crypt is is a younger sounding <laughs> name yeah. than Ethel Merman. I, I agree. Uh, Adam Eve Christ is a younger sounding name. <laughs> and she and she was on. Now they do these they do these weird timelines because she's. So I did this deep dive into Ethel Merman. Oh, lay it now on me. Talking. Pour it and over me. Ethel Merman died in like 84 mm. at like 1984 at like 76 or something, something like that. Um, when she did this love line, uh, love line, love boat, I always said she did love boat. She was like 71, 72 mm. years old. And she looked it. You go back and look at early, the black hair and the thing, yeah. and they became elderly yeah. people. We've now, we don't accept that as a society mm-hmm. anymore. You got to get work done and Botox and dye your hair every three days and whatever, whatever it is. We do not accept that. Also, I was thinking of you, Gina. I made a note somewhere. I don't like where uh, this is going. You probably, you're not just a beautiful woman. <laughs> Thank you, probably, you. you probably know Ann Miller. Do you know the name Ann Miller? Yeah, that was, um, what's his name's wife? The uh, Canadian singer? No, um... No, Who that's Snowbird. Ann Murray. That's Ann Murray. Was, okay. Yeah, no, she Ann Mar- Ann Miller was a Broadway tap dancing oh, same same me. era, same type. Um, back when stars were stars and they would <laughs> go out screen. there. Yes, and they they did the whole nine yards. Anyway, <laughs> reason I. And she was married to somebody famous at some yeah. point. But the reason I brought her yeah. up is because I took a little IMDb dive into her as well. And uh, there was all the standard stuff, Broadway, right. changing the name, blah, blah, blah. At some point, it was noted, like personal life. Mm-hmm. Um, with her first marriage, uh, she was pregnant mm. and was thrown downstairs. Oh, my. And uh, then the uh, gravy chain running. gave birth and the baby died three days later. Oh, and now, Jesus. I'll bet they didn't press charges against the guy. This is back when... I'm having an argument with my pregnant wife. Where are the stairs? Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> when my backhand just won't do. You, you, you live in a single story uh, ranch in, in Reseda. Well, then we'll go to the parking structure. Yeah. yeah. We got to throw her down Why some stairs. stairs? Right somewhere. And it was, Ugh. yeah, see if you can find the, it was like personal life or something, but uh, she was thrown downstairs when she was pregnant and then the kid came out wrong. And, uh, but yeah, you kept moving back then. Know what I mean? Well, who would believe you? Who would care? You didn't uh, yeah. lawyer up. So, so during her marriage to Reese Lewin Milner, while pregnant with daughter Mary in their last trimester, in her oh last trimester, God. oh God, she was thrown down the stairs by Milner and went into early labor. Her baby Mary lived only three hours. Ugh. Yeah, if, uh, brutal. This is why you got to take the deep dive on, on IMDb because yeah. everyone's got some crazy, yeah. tragic story mm-hmm. in their life. You know, you know, I'm seeing her on the love boat and the blah 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 and the star of the silver screen God, and everything. She's but, stunning, right? But uh, oh, anyway, uh, dated Howard Hughes. That's what I've. Now that's what talking. I was thinking of. So Howard would have never thrown her downstairs. <laughs> he would have touched Howard her. Would have definitely <laughs> paid someone to throw her downstairs. He wouldn't have got his yeah. hands dirty. He wouldn't have dirty his hands. <laughs> literally, <laughs> never dirty his hands. Right, literally. Yeah. So uh, yeah. All right. So Cruz is allowed to get a little older. Yeah, and I mean, well, this kind of happened to Zac Efron a couple months ago too. He filmed, he did a video, and everyone's kind of commenting that his face was puffy. But yeah, that's just the that's just, you what's can't, that fat ass do now? I know. Mm. Well, also, here's a theory: um, Cruz probably trains his ass off like relentlessly to do his films, right? And personal trainer, he's probably on set, he's probably got the mobile gym, you know, he's probably up at four in the morning working out and the call time seven and blah, blah, blah. I agree with all of this, but he's on a healthy dose of HGH, of course, right? I'm, Yeah, I'm guessing. Probably. And then it, so I, when it's I, not I, time. At some point, he goes, fuck it, I got two months off, yeah. right. I'm going to have a hot dog yes. with my son yeah. in, this, in a fucking IPA and like... I don't give a fuck yeah. anymore. Like Gina after the wedding. That's yeah. exactly right. <laughs> yes. Well, he looks so different that a lot of the comments were, I think that's a lookalike. 
I don't think that's mm-hmm. Tom Cruise. Like, and he's just going around mm-hmm. telling everybody he's Tom Cruise. With the front row seat. Yeah, if you, if you look, I mean, if you look like that, yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd play it off. I, I actually ran into a Guy Fieri lookalike in my wa- at the Brewers game. What have you been to Kansas any, City? Any D bag is a yeah. <laughs> Guy Fieri lookalike. Wow. Look just like as him. on top of his yeah. baseball hat. Is that, <laughs> that how you know? Any no, he wore the visor. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I think that. The tell that it's not a lookalike is as he was sitting with Tom Cruise's son. <laughs> yeah, that would be that'd be a hard, yeah. also, a hard ruse to pull off. Also, but. Danny Glover came up and talked to him, and they had, they were having a pretty meaningful conversation. Was it really like, Danny Glover? Mm-hmm. So, oh yeah, might oh. not have been racist. Uh, but he waved to the crowd as the staff blared "Danger Zone" throughout the stadium. You know ah. what though? With the whole, I mean, I don't, I have no clue, and nobody talked about it with Norm Macdonald either. But you know, in terms of like puffiness. This doesn't look, I, I, from just my naked eye, it doesn't look like weight gain. It looks like puffiness. So then maybe he's in some treatment that he <sighs> might not be sharing with us. Is that the <sighs> the consensus here? Maybe it is. Possibly. I don't know. Yeah. Hard, hard know. to say, but he does have two killer movies that are coming out next year. And I can't <laughs> That's going to be a big year for Tom Cruise. Oh, yeah. He's going to own the summer. Um, well, speaking of baseball, celebrity baseball fans today, John C- uh, Cusack, Cusack, I saw this. yeah, he I saw is this. trending right now. So um, he was confronted by a, a barstool sports employee, Dave Williams, also known as White Sox Dave, mm-hmm. and and John has a tendency to go from he's a Chicago guy, go from Cubs to White Sox mm-hmm. in in gear and support mm-hmm. very often. So the White Sox Dave, he's had enough of it. <laughs> So he he sees Cusack in the in the uh, the White Sox uh, garb, and he goes up to him and just start, and just confronts him. He has a, he has a buddy just filming it the whole time, and it's just basically saying, "Look, you can't be wearing White Sox stuff if you're going to be supporting Cubs. We're in Chicago. We have two teams. Where you pick one." And John Cusack, I mean, you could play some of it if you is that video, Kalen? Here we go. Yeah, so they're kind of getting into it. It's hard to hear. About being a fan is being miserable. You can't just go to the Cubs side when I, I, can, I went to the both parks growing up. But that doesn't count. You can't do that. That's like you want to both parks growing up. Chicago is that you got two teams to root for. We'll have, we'll have to agree to disagree. Agree to disagree, I guess. But I think it's Adam's uh, favorite uh, argument. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Stinks. <laughs> I miss Lottie. Yeah. Thanks, Cusack. He's banned. He's so, number one on my ban list. <laughs> so this, this I just video hear has, Whitey's out of problems. That's yeah, exactly that's right. <laughs> this is the most first world we problem any group could ever have. Uh, so this this video has been viewed millions of times, and everybody's on John's side. They're like, "Yeah, let the guy let the guy support what, whatever teams he grew up supporting." And he th- I thought he handled it really well. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt a disagree. little strong, strongly about this when I was a younger man. Uh, like, if there's a rivalry, like USC UCLA or I don't know Iowa Iowa State, that, you know that that's a rivalry that that that's they're going head to head, whatever. But if it's like I got love for the A's, I got love, I'm a Giants fan, but I'm, right. I don't mind if the A's do well. I might wear an A's hat to an A's game. I feel strongly exactly the opposite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You pick a team. I'm an A's fan. I hate the Giants. That's mm. weird. Yeah, the, the Giants fans don't care. But you know you're in a really, really rich part of town because on the Strand in Manhattan Beach, do you know how many signs and how many flags are a house divided when they're sending one kid oh, to sure. USC and one UCLA. kid to UCLA? Those those flags are but everywhere. they're rivals that compete in the same conference. Like if you're, I don't know, the the, 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 the Cowboys and the Texans, like how much real rivalry right. is there? Are you in the AFC and the NFC? Well, poor pussy whip Dr. Drew, the, the, Fuck the that scribbler. Guy. Fuck that guy. <laughs> he, <laughs> this is Known as a scribbler, ha- code name scribbler, <laughs> handle scribbler. He uh, he went to USC med school. Maybe he's forced to go sit in the UCLA stands every year at the Rose he Bowl. He attended when, USC. Where USC and in UCLA play play their rival game every year. He's got to go and, sit in there. And why is that? Because his wife got a bachelor's and who gives a shit from UCLA. I'm first off, Ugh. let's just whip out degrees. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, let's, Which trumps what? That's right. Yeah, let's just play aces or whatever when you flip the cards and you go, you got a nine. Good. I just slapped a queen on top of that bitch. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like the doctor degree and your horticulture degree, <laughs> undergrad, whatever, that don't mean jack shit. Talk some sense under the man. Plus, he then went on to become a working doctor. She went on to become a travel agent. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Not even using the degree. A botanist travel agent. Yeah, move it on over to the USC side. That's yeah. what I'm saying. All right. Wait, well, you played for the Trojans, and your kid's a uh, UCLA guy. 
Yeah, I, I don't like this at all. I, I don't like this at all. I, 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 I played for the East Valley Trojans. <laughs> we had the exact same uniforms as USC Trojans oh. did. So I, at starting at age seven and a half. So it was easy for me yeah. to like the USC Trojans because they're A, in town. B, they were kicking ass mm-hmm. during that whole time. And you C, had the t-shirt. I had the jersey right. t-shirt. How dare you? <laughs> that was my first Little League. I'm the exact same uniform. <laughs> that was my first Little League team was the A's. In Little League, everyone's on a different yeah. Expos or right. whatever it was back then. I was on the A's, and it was like 88, 89. They were kicking ass. It was like, this is awesome. I have a dumb question. Please. Were the A's ever in Kansas City? Yes. Because my well, brother... Well, before. Well, because in like Pee Wee League, they were the A's. Well... Literally licenses out its actual teams, so you might be on the Red Sox or you might I be on see. the you know the Rangers. Thank you. You just luck of the draw, you end up on your home team. Got it. Either way, at some point, I went to the Sun Valley Falcons and then just kind of mm. lost like, touch. Notable yeah. Falcons fan. Right. Well, the Falcons, and here's the deal: the Falcons did not share the uniform that oh, the Atlanta sure. Falcons had. So now you're oh. in a no man's land. You're just called the Falcons, like, but you're wearing like a high school uniform that was blue and gold, and it looked nothing like, like the a Atlanta generic Falcons. video game team. Yes. Like, I don't know what yes. All right. The point I, is, is people shouldn't care as much as they do. Yeah, I mean, at some point. Well, uh, White Sox Dave, he's he's leaning into it. He tweeted out, "John Cusack can suck my balls." Oh, wow! And then John well, responds, uh, "Cusack was very nice to him. He was. He was thought, very yeah. Yeah, but he this is a, giving him a little uh, little publicity, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so this works for him. He's leaning into it, and then John replies, "Funny, I was right in your face, and you backed away and cowered like a little whi- a whiny little boy with your gotcha cell phone." I check I check you for your balls next time, but you don't have any, son. Meantime, you you go blow someone else because I'm just not into you. Wow. Nice. So, good, there you good go, John. Kuzak. Good Get for it. Kuzak. Yeah. <laughs> now, wait a minute. Blow somebody else. Is that getting to some sort of, you know, like saying, uh, that car is so gay. Like, are we getting into that? Meantime, yeah. you go blow someone else. Yeah. I, I can mean, see up. White Sox Dave is a little thirsty on this one. It is National oh, Coming Out Day. I can oh, see. Yeah, oh, maybe there's mm-hmm. a tie-in. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. they're distracted. Yeah, I like Cusack's response, but pick a team, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about doubling down. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of of sportsmanship, well, don't shouldn't we do it this way? Like, uh, I'm a Rams fan. Rams played so far. Dawson's Chargers played so far. At some point. If the Rams get knocked out of the playoffs or something and the Chargers are still around, then I got to go, well, who am I rooting for? Right. Uh, sure. Am I rooting for Tampa? Like, you got to watch on a something. I'm rooting for Chargers. Oh, they, wait. I thought they, it was the other way around. Because, hmm. like, my family's hardcore, diehard Bears fans, because we're all from Chicago, they're not just going to suddenly root for the fucking Packers. Once again, they compete <laughs> in the same division. Oh, That's a I don't rival. Know about any of this. If it's the Chargers okay. and the Rams, eh, you know what? Rams are out of it. Go Chargers. Okay. Yeah, okay. And also, I mean, they're not. They're not teams who have historically. I it, Chargers are easy to root for because they're so snake bitten. Yeah. 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 They're fun right now too. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I sent Kale in the picture of fake guy Fierre. We should just show <laughs> them. Look how, yeah. Mm-hmm. Look at look how. Look at this guy. Well, was he trying to cultivate the guy Fieri look or? Was uh, he attempting to be he fake? Nailed, guy oh, yeah. Wow. There was a huge crowd around this guy. That's but, why it felt like it was Guy yeah, Fieri. Yeah, he wants oh. to be Guy Fieri. Oh, yeah. That's, 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 a, yeah. that's bro Fieri. I'm taking it back. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Fieri. <laughs> it's good. Yeah. And I'm a huge Guy Fieri fan, so I was really it, excited. This is not happenstance. This guy put effort into this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, is exactly. Dan, he was taking Dan? pictures with everybody. <laughs> is that Dan Fennerty from the Dan? <laughs> it could be. Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> um, all right. Well, speaking of sportsmanship, there's a big boxing match. Over mm-hmm. the weekend, and yeah, um, and it, Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder. The trilogy. Can, can I tell you this? It's it's uh, it's a little bone of contention because my thing is is I don't care how much money I have. I'm not good enough. It's not rich enough. Mm-hmm. I'm not good enough to buy a seventy three dollar pay per view <laughs> unless I can justify. Five or six right. people. Oh. Yeah. Now they don't have to pay me. I just have to. Ju- I just yeah. have to justify it. I yeah. was sitting in Malibu Saturday night alone, mm. w- dying to see the yeah. fight. But I'm sitting alone. Yeah, it can't be done. Can't be done. I can't pay that kind of money and be alone right. in Malibu. Sunny was sitting in the goddamn movie theater I built in La Cunada. <laughs> Bought the fight. Wow. <laughs> Watched the whole thing on a 20 foot screen in a movie theater. While looking at his phone. And while looking at his phone. And 
claims, you guys tell me this, claims he pays for the fight himself. Oh. Mm. First off, there is no paying for yourself. He pushes all, the button himself. It all comes himself. from me. Yeah. Yeah. He claims it's whatever money he has. I know how much merch he and, sells. And then he <laughs> also claimed that he got money from the five neighborhood buddies who came. They whacked it up oh. like five, six ways. Well, given that, he knows exactly what you want to hear. Yeah, but he yeah. did say, and this is interesting, he did bring up one guy who didn't have the money. Oh. So kind of go, oh. because That's specific. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. if you're just lying, you got five guys, they all put in 15 bucks. They all brought we cupcakes. Brought, we, brought, we broke even, but anyway. to cover Nate. All right, I like that story, then I'm in. There was Good an excellent sunny. fight. Yeah, excellent fight. So I, Bobby I hear. Said it was, <laughs> you wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. Well, uh, here I'll, I'll give you. I'll give I you. Watch the... a six million dollar man alone <laughs> eating a TV dinner. I'll say. I'll save you these seventy plus dollars. Fury defeated Wilder with an eleventh round knockout. Coming back from two knockdowns in one of the most entertaining of heavyweight fights, Bob Arum said it was like the best fight heavyweight fight he's ever seen. Um, but at the end, there's video of Deontay going up to Wilder. Uh, you can't really hear what they're saying, but they're just kind of they're just talking, and um, and then uh, they they look like they're kind of they're not really. Shaking hands and like hugging, like I love seeing. I love seeing good sportsmanship yeah. after a fight. Yeah, like, it's not personal. It's yeah, yeah, this, like Cusack. Right, like Cusack. Yeah, yeah. Right. That, that fist bump was nice. So they asked Fury what uh, what they were talking about. Fury said, I, "I went up to him. I said, well done.' And he said, "I don't want to show any sportsmanship or respect." Mm. Oh, that's that's what Wilder said. Yeah, mm. and then uh, and uh, Deontay or uh, excuse me, Fury said, "Okay, no problem." Very surprised. Sore loser, idiot. <laughs> call, the, call the guy sore loser and an idiot. And and then he went and serenaded the crowd, saying walking in Memphis. <laughs> well, it was beautiful. All right. So uh, Tyson Fury is interesting because he's named after Mike Tyson. So he was oh. he was put Born here to, to a box. Fighter. His dad's a wow. gypsy bare knuckler. So he was <laughs> literally born to fight. I'm a big fan of the guy because as a guy who's got love handles. He is the baddest man on the planet with love handles. Mm. There's nothing better than seeing a dude with love handles just whoop Kick ass out. on a guy with that V, uh, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. where, the, where the pubic bone just goes all the way yeah. up. It's a six oh. pack. I, I want one of those so bad. I, I've seen the bishop. They're also like I've seen this before. <laughs> it's named after a chess piece. Yeah, it's weird, right? <laughs> the, 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 seems weird. I guess if you look at the bishop, yeah, kind of yeah. comes yeah. in yeah. at the it's carved out. Of it. yeah. I've seen black dudes who do not have the same bones that I have. Like it, it goes into their trunks, yeah. and it's shit. still going in. It's yeah. still heading in. Yeah. Uh, like, it's at no point does it step out where, like, the hips or the yeah. waistline is. Like, it is heading down and it's going to keep going. Do you like that, Gina? Is that something girls really notice too? Yeah. Okay. I know. I'm pretty Oh, my God. Mind, honestly. Fury's got some love handles. <laughs> and I just like a guy with, you know, he's got a, <laughs> yeah. he's got a, Those look, are dad bod. He's got a dad bod. And he puts a whooping on a guy with the 4% body fat. Fury is this. Interesting guy in that he's the real deal. Also, Deontay Wilder, Wilder was considered kind of unbeatable four years ago or something like that. And he was just knocking everyone out. He was just kind of a freak because he was super tall, maybe 6'7", six, 6'6", seven, six, six, seven in there. Uh, super angular like you know he was like 6'7", and like 214 pounds or something. Really lean. And he just threw, you know, he threw punches like Daryl Strawberry would swing a bat. He's, just, un, he's un, uncoiled. Uncoiled, yes. Great leverage. And he was just knocking everyone out. And then he runs into the crazy gypsy guy with the love handles, <laughs> and he can't get through him. Mm. And and he got battered. You know, he really got beat up, and his eyes were swollen shut, and he had blood coming from his ear and Jesus. all that kind of stuff. And And it's the third fight. So I think the first Fury won, the second was a draw, or maybe the first was a draw and the second Fury won. The, the, the point is, is once you do three, it's kind of been settled. So there's no, there's no more you going, I can beat the best guy in the world, I'm the best in the world, because the best guy in the world beat you two out of three times and one was a, one, one was a draw. So now you're fighting the third best guy in the world because the two best guys in the world have to, have to fight. Um. There's not a lot... There's not a lot of places he can go. And I mean, he can get fights, but not those kind of paydays. He doesn't have the. And then also the, the psychology of knocking out 
32 guys in a row and then just really getting your ass beaten for an extended period of time. I mean, it just, I've done enough boxing where a good beating, it hangs around for a while. You don't just fucking shake that off. Like you got beat up, you know it, it's there. And once it's there, it's hard to get out of your head. That dude, you know, the baddest man on the planet is no longer baddest man. Right. And the guy Beach has got the love handles and talks crazy and is a crazy gypsy yeah. family. Irish travelers. Right. Yeah, singing karaoke after, after he beats you. <laughs> and, you know, not didn't look too marked up either. No. Seem seemed none the worse for wear. Also, I don't know if it's the picture that you that we just put on the screen, but he doesn't seem to have like big like I figure a guy with that body, like a really sort of rectangle body, would have big legs and big thighs. Looks spindly. He doesn't seem to. Well, never, I mean, never underestimate the 6'9 part. It's, it's, oh, shit, he's 6'9? Yeah, there are a few guys on the planet. Carl Malone, maybe Jimmy Kimmel, I get them mixed up sometimes. <laughs> uh, there are a few dudes on the planet, Wilt Chamberlain is kind of say, where you are that tall in built, like right. big. It's, you don't, uh, Tony Gonzalez is sure. a guy, former tight end chief. He's like 6'5, six, 6'6, five, six, 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 and yeah. but she's, Big. Sure. I mean, like you don't usually you kind of get stretched out. Right. You kind of look like Kevin Durant or some something like that. So it is leg be, day important in boxing? Hmm? Is leg day important in boxing? Like working out the legs? Is it? They don't do anything specific in boxing for your legs. They <laughs> all you do is jump rope and move and spar and spar and move, and that's your. I've never seen a guy like on the hack slide or something mm. like that. They don't even. Most like the old school trainers would go like, stay away from the weights. Wow. You work on all this technique and double ended bag and punch mitts and, and all that kind of mm. stuff. But I don't know who's going to beat Tyson Fury. I, I, and a lot of it is resolve and attitude and whatever. And he's got all of that. He's, like, ex- he's expected to fight fellow Brit Dillian White early next year. Hmm. So, and that might be in the UK. Oh, so. did you, uh, was it uh, Dawson or Kalen or whatever? Now, you guys remember Ruiz. Ruiz was the Mexican fighter, heavyweight, who had the heavyweight strap like five years ago for like 10 minutes, who was the, you want to talk about a dad bod, who was the <laughs> short, <laughs> yeah. who was the shortest, fattest guy. I don't know if he beat a Klitschko or who he beat, but oh. he Oh, he beat uh, Anthony, Anthony Joshua. Joshua. Yeah. Who he beat is, the Michelin man. Now, the Ant, so he is you want to talk man. about physiques. Anthony Joshua was a, a Greek Roman statue, like 6'6", and his physique was unbelievable. And then you have the guy with the huge gut and the stretched out areolas and the man titties and lactating. He went and lactating. beat okay. Anthony Joshua to be, and the reason I'm, I'm, um, bringing this one up is um, he wow. recently got a tattoo and his tattoo was on his back, but they didn't stop at his waistline. Oh. Maybe they couldn't find it. <laughs> sure. He just went and it kept going full ass cheek coverage, full really? tattoo ass cheek coverage on this on this uh, <laughs> former heavyweight champion he was he was the, oh, yeah. he was oh the, my god he was the bell of the ball for like yeah. 10 minutes because oh he was like his pants all right he's got his shorts down around his butt cheeks like his, under, under, under the cheek fully yeah fully exposed cheeks there had to he be i don't know if they got a rib spreader in there <laughs> how did they get that there's inner cheek yeah I don't, work yeah. it's a wow. full Custom van mural you'd yes. see in South Central, but I mean uh, maybe Sunlin or whatever. The it point is, is it, 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 it goes City. right down his ass. Wow, wow, that's full ass it goes coverage. Goes into the abyss. Yeah, I wonder right? if they got any. Um, what did we decide it was the uh, b- 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 the frenulum the. Oh, oh per- perineum. 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 Yeah. Perineum. Yeah. Yeah. perineum. There is full now. I don't know who he's going to fight next. He's too short. For these super heavyweights, because now yeah. super heavyweights are six nine, Damn. and then you know Vander Holyfield, six two, Muhammad Ali, six two, Larry Holmes, six three, maybe six four on a good day. Uh, Mike Tyson, famously, maybe five nine, yeah. five ten. There's no more of those guys. You got to be six nine. How are you going to deal with Tyson Fury's crazy 
condor Reach. wingspan when you're ground. when you're six foot one. Yeah. You just wow. have, there's so like like fatter guys have so much power. I remember I, I went to a Tampa Bay Rays game and before the game they let the they, they had all these like guys come on for slow pitch softball home run derby. Right. And they they were just and they were all just these fat dad bod guys and they were they were whacking the crap out of these balls. They would hit the other side, the wall of the other side. They don't like farther than any home run ball in baseball that I've seen. But could they run to first base? No, I mean no. They, they I, no way. <laughs> they got gassed. They, but they were they were power, all power. All right, let's bring it home. All right, thanks for listening. Oh, sorry, buddy. Go ahead. oh thanks for listening to Training Top. Check out the Water Cooler Podcast. I bet your Guy Fieri could launch a softball <laughs> yeah. in the stratosphere. That guy's got a <laughs> softball hitting body. All right. Jeff Dye, comedian's going to come join us in a second. First, I'll tell you about X Chair, right? Oh, oh, it's the best. We're all in them right now. Thank you, X Chair. I bought an X Chair years ago just to use in my home office. They just delivered a whole bunch of, um, I guess it'd them, be man. like bar stool size ones uh so they make them on all different sizes and uh it is so nice so ergonomic and they're sharp looking too they look yeah, good awesome. and uh they have the uh, lmx massage and the temperature regulation exclusively des- designed for the x chair plus customized support of x chairs patented dynamic variable lumbar or dvl these chairs are the real deal. Then they look really sharp, too. Very modern, very Euro-looking. Mm-hmm. Try X Chair for yourself, risk-free, for 30 days. Once you realize how much better your chair should be, you'll never go back to your old chair. It's X Chair, right, Dawson? Go to XChairAdam.com now. That's the letter X, chair, A-D-A-M.com, or call 1-844-4X-CHAIR. For $100 off your order, X Chair has a 30-day guarantee for complete comfort, and you can finance your purchase for as little as $30 a month at XChairAdam.com. All right. Comedian Jeff Dye is going to join us. We'll talk to him right after this.